I'm Jesse McAnally. And I am Andrew DeWolf. And I'm Brianna Jones. And welcome to Musicals with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get Andrew and Brie to like musical theater. And today we have a super special guest. Wow, the specialist guest that we've never had on the show before. No, that's not true. Except, for that, one t- except for that one time that we did. Um <laughs> Today, we are once again <laughs> welcoming actress, singer, podcaster, which is brand new compared to last time, Rachel Chan. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thank you for having me back. Wait, what's the podcast? Um, I started a podcast with my best friend called In Betweening the Podcast. And um, it's been interesting. It's stressful, but interesting. I have newfound yeah, you respect don't say. for what you guys do. Yeah. You don't have to have any respect for what we do. I mean, no, maybe what you we're do. We're trash. But... <laughs> well, it's been a hundred episodes since the last time I was on here, so a hundred. Oh my no. god! Well, we hit a hundred something... episodes since last time you were on there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's what, what I she, meant. She guessed it relatively early, right? Am I? I mean, she was Miss Saigon, and now you're gonna make me have to look at our cheese rating list oh to figure my out god, where that Miss episode Saigon. fell. Yeah, that was a I long like time Miss ago. Saigon. I thought that was a good one. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't like Miss Saigon? I love Miss Saigon. I just um Oh, you don't think it was a good episode? No, it was a, okay. it we was did a, a great episode. Job. It's just me. <laughs> me on the episode, you know? That was everybody episode 46. Everybody get on Twitter and, and tell her how, how much you liked the Miss Saigon episode. That's well, like they a, don't that's need like to. That's like a fan favorite. Yeah, people on Twitter have told me that Miss Saigon episode is their favorite and that they loved Rachel on it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, now, I you to live, now you have to live up to that. I don't that. re-listen to episodes, <laughs> but oh, God. Um, the consensus is that you did very good and people loved you. Well, thank you, guys. I, I'm... Going back and listening to early episodes is like a cringe experience that I don't need in my life. So. I've done it once yeah. or twice because people have like criticized us for things we said, and I'm like, oh Christ, what did we say? It's like, well, yeah, of course I said something dumb. That was a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of reflecting back on dumb things, we're looking back at the year 2016 in this episode, Ooh. and nothing horrible happened that year. Nothing at all. Mm. And Rachel, you suggested this episode. I didn't suggest it. I didn't throw this out there. So I just want to make that very clear. I was not the one that suggested this. I would love to have you, you back to talk with, about. You were like, Allegiance. I've been wanting to do that for so long. So I was like, well, if he's that you know, excited about it, I have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it has a nice-ish pro shot of it. <laughs> yeah. I watched it's it during just, quarantine because gotta... they just released it. So... I was Do you know how much the happy. DVD of this is worth? It's not even a Blu-ray. A DVD of Allegiance. How much they're how selling much? it for? A hundred and fifty fucking dollars just what? for the DVD of Allegiance. <laughs> what? That's ridiculous. Man, I'm so glad stealing exists. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, we're talking about Allegiance this week. <laughs> Did we not mention what we were talking about? Cue oh the God. music, Bree. <laughs> That piece of paper there, it is an outrage. So many tens of thousands of lives destroyed for what? They could deport you back to Japan. They called it questionnaire. They took our fun, they took our home, and now our honor is at stake. But that they'll never take, never take. Allegiance is a musical with music and lyrics by J. Coe. Or tell me if I said that wrong. K-U-O. I think that's right. J. Coe. Um, yes, you pronounce a, everyone's name wrong. Like, I do. It's be like upset. a running joke on the show. <laughs> um, and a book by Mark Acido and Lorenzo Thorne. The story is set during the Japanese-American internment of World War II with a framing story set in present day was inspired by the personal experiences of George Takei, who stars in the musical. It follows the Kimura family in the years following the attack of Pearl Harbor, as they formed to, they are forced to leave their farm in Salinas, which is a place in California, and are sent to the Heart Mountain Relocation Center in the rural plains of Wyoming, which just sounds terrible, being in Wyoming. It's just absolutely horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> the musical began development in 2008 and premiered on September tw- in tw- uh, 
premiered in September 2012 in San Diego, California. It played on Broadway from October 2015 to February of 2016. Reviews on Broadway were mixed, although the cast was generally play praised. We're done with that until we enter our brief view section, which will come soon. Um, but Rachel, Andrew, what is our overall just general thoughts on Allegiance? I will let the guests go first. Oh, God. Um... <laughs> Well, I really appreciated the musical. I think that it tried to tackle a very hard um, topic and a lot of themes, like there are so many, um, which almost made it a little bit difficult to like f keep up with and follow. But I think that it did a really good job um, sort of like showing what the Japanese uh, Americans went through and their general experience. And yeah, I think the music was beautiful um, and very underrated. I think what it did very well with the way it tackles, because this obviously is a difficult subject to cover, um, for especially for a, a musical. Uh, I think having three different characters that all look at the situation in different ways kind of helps with covering it in a more effective way um, that really shows all the different viewpoints that the Japanese had on the situation. All right. Um, here, here I am being the negative Nelly <laughs> once again. Jess is going to be the mean one. Well, Jess, you have to hate everything. I, I don't though. I I spent the we first to, hundred we have to episodes. Take turns actually, we have to take turns. I didn't. If love... I don't hate it. You have to hate it. <laughs> I didn't love this musical. I feel like it is very confused, and it needed like a few more hours in the oven before it came out to be seen by everyone. I love a lot of the pieces of it, but I feel like it doesn't quite know the message it wants to say, and it gets very confused on the way to the final scene. Mm -hmm. But I think that in that way, um, the entire situation that the people of that time must have been living in was very confused. So yes. I kind of had to learn to like appreciate how I was a bit all over the place because it was all over the place. And one of the biggest themes that I think it really had to tackle was the in-betweenness of the Japanese Americans of that time. Um, I'm a third culture kid and they were cross culture kids um, in our globalized world. There's so many of those. And that sort of like in-betweening of not knowing really where their allegiance lies um, was very well captured i think and how confused it was um but at the same time i do agree with uh it being a little bit underdeveloped like i would have wanted to see it kind of go through a bit more um development before it went on broadway yes and i don't understand it felt very rushed onto broadway i know they started like testing it out there into the world in 2012 and that is like a three-ish year development process but I'm not sure wh what part of it was like, we need a lot more Broadway centric dance numbers. <laughs> yeah, I think they tried to add in a lot of different styles, like not just the uh, Japanese infused songs, but also like songs from America of that time. But it still was super strange. And I think they, they tried to make a point with that um sort of like the juxtaposition of the Asian cast doing like super like upbeat jazz uh, Broadway musical theater type dances. But at the same time, I was like, this is visually a bit confusing. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and also, this has nothing to do with nothing. It is one of the worst pro shots I have ever seen just in the way it was shot. Mm -hmm. There's like one part where they just close up on some random person and then cut back. And I was so confused. There are times where you remember. see the cameraman's shadow on the actors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and that's not really, this is, that's not really points against the show. No. Because that, I mean, that's just the way that they're filming it. And yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous it's that they're selling shot. that pro shot for $150 is more what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> Why would, would, is that like a normal cost for a pro shot though? No. That's like a very high price. That's Definitely like not. what I would expect to pay for like a ticket to the show. <laughs> 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 but me, both me and Andrew are Americans. Um, Rachel, you're decidedly not. 
I am not, no. <laughs> and I'm not Japanese either. I'm Singaporean. No. But um, I think because I did a lot of moving around in my childhood, I have grown up in that sort of like, where do I really belong? Um, the same as a lot of like children of immigrants feel. And so my biggest like entry into the show was that sort of like how they captured the confusion of the um the first second generation first generation americans japanese americans um so Kay and sammy and how they had to sort of uh really figure out where they belonged and where they they should place their allegiance so that was my favorite part and my favorite theme of the entire show but i think it's less obvious to um maybe another perspective watching the show mm-hmm. even though the show well, is called allegiance <laughs> i guess as an american i feel like it was a little bit soft on americans yes which maybe is an american centric point because maybe as an american i want to see like i see everything as like oh americans made this therefore they're being soft on america um so maybe that maybe i'm actually wrong on that front but uh, it felt like you know, this was a pretty terrible thing that America did, and it felt very soft. Like, there's, it's just like, there's dance numbers, and, and they're like, oh, making jokes about it. And it's like, eh, mm-hmm. <laughs> is this really something to joke about? I don't know. <laughs> it felt like you want to critique Americans in the way that they acted, but they also wanted to entertain them. And they all, and between the critique and entertainment, the entertainment always won. And that was where I felt like, Okay, pick your side like as not with as a character, but pick your side as a show, because, you know, we round literally we did the same thing that the Germans were doing, that they are demonized the same day, like, well, for doing. I mean, I guess to be fair to America, we didn't do the same thing as the Germans. We weren't summarily executing them, but. (laughs) Uh, we, we took away their property similar. without like we arrested yes. them without any like trial or anything. That's bullshit. And uh, absolutely. I feel like our feet were not held to the fire by this show. Yeah, I think it it didn't. I felt like when they did explore how terrible the situation is, they didn't bring it to like a huge dramatic or like very um, touching sort of place. So whenever they did try to touch on where. Um, they were suffering and stuff. It it just wasn't as impactful as I wish it was. Yeah. I also think, and, and I'm not sure how they could have done it, but I, I, it feels like they tried to uh, turn the whole situation into almost like a bad individual actors because there was always like one American soldier that was a little too violent or, or you know, it was just like, oh, it's just that one soldier. It's like, no, no, no. All of America got together and agreed to put these people in camps. Like, this wasn't just one guy was a little bit over the top, you know? And I'm not sure if that's something they could have fixed, because obviously limited cast, but I think you could see a, more of a story element to it than mm-hmm. just, like, showing one person who pulls a gun out when he probably shouldn't have, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, the the one american character that is really even i mean she's not even that developed but um that developed is nurse hannah and she's like the good girl you know yeah she's like oh well i'm an american but i care it's like you're working in in a concentration camp yes like you are a nurse at a concentration camp do you not see like why aren't you out protesting this why aren't you trying to stop this from happening if you're such a good person who really cares (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. i mean we're we're so far into this episode and we still haven't really gotten to what the plot of allegiance is so rachel why don't you tell us what the plot of the show is oh my goodness why is this always my job <laughs> Fuck it, Andrew, you tell us what the show is i don't give a shit okay we can take turns i mean what, what do you think <laughs> yeah go for it you you get one sentence and rachel gets the next sentence <laughs> okay okay um uh, so the story, I, I I kind of picture it as about three guys. Essentially, you have the father, the son, and the Holy, <laughs> the Spirit. Holy Spirit, family, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> yeah, the family friend, the father, the son, and, and the family friend. 
<laughs> um. Oh, now now it's American. <laughs> uh, but they all have different takes on what happens here, and, and it leads them down different paths. Uh, one becomes a soldier in the American army. One causes someone to die because they're protesting the uh protesting the what, what would you call it the questionnaire they put out essentially um and one is imprisoned because I, I can't quite remember what he did to be imprisoned i think it was just, he they didn't like him. vehemently said like <laughs> no i do not support the american army yeah mm. which is completely fair <laughs> but yeah um all right all right who's next I, I got I got I got the, the Rachel pick up where he left out. up. Um yeah, so the story kind of uh goes through introducing all those characters and um a woman named Kay who is a sister of Sammy, the one that fights in the army, and it follows them losing all of their land uh and being put into the concentration camps when the war starts and yeah <laughs> and <laughs> everything goes great well, everything goes great it. jess why don't you finish up for us um we're gonna take our, turns i mean i'm down to finish this this is easy from this part um so sammy goes off to war he comes back finds out that oh no he's his white girlfriend got shot on an accident because of <laughs> vaguely something Kay was involved with. Um, and so he disowns his sister and his father forever. And then he's George because, Takei and then he forgives. Kind of. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of bizarre, too, because he disowns his sister and father because they didn't completely disown the guy who really didn't actually do anything. Like was it, he was he was trying to stop someone else from shooting uh K, right? Ye kind of? Or shooting Maybe. him? Shorty. I think the reason he was... that he was upset though is because they like K was in love with him, but they had been bashing heads throughout the entire thing. Um, yeah, they were on. I feel like that wasn't disagreed. highlighted as much as they should have. Like they they were like idealistically, I disagree with you, but let's go dance. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like, and then and then they just both kind of separate and and that's it. It should have they should have focused a lot heavier on the debate between those two ideas and like, hey, why this is why we should side with the Americans to get them to like us, and this is why the Americans will never like us and we should not side with them. Uh mm -hmm. basically. <laughs> I think they tried to do that with the Act One closer. Which... Yeah. Yeah, they showed like them sort of singing in their different perspectives, but at the same time, it wasn't one hundred percent like clearly drawn out. And I wish it was. Wasn't angry enough. Yeah, we needed like a head-on like we need a confrontation song like confrontation. we had in Les Mis. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And Miss Saigon. Yeah. Can I talk you need that you need that build up to the real confrontation because that really never happens. Even when he comes back and is like actually confronting them, he doesn't confront him. He confronts his sister and his father and then leaves. I think the mind of I like hindsight ruins this musical for me, if that makes sense. Like I okay. cannot follow Sammy's plan and like his allegiance to drop the title um, because I know what the Americans do in retaliation and they drop a fucking nuke on them. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. yeah okay. Now, I mean, I you can't think of the show in that way, though, because he didn't know that was going to happen. No, but <laughs> I, as an audience member, I'm like, OK, you feel jingoistic. And I and I sit at personally and a person that hates like the police and the military while still supporting veterans. Well, maybe this is why the show needed to be more elaborate more on his positions to get you to kind of at least even if in your mind you're like, OK, well, he's wrong in the end to at least think like, OK, this is why he thinks he's right, though. But I think the show agrees with him is the problem. It kind of does. And I kind of agree with that point, because, I mean, even the ending, he's still in his military uniform uh, when he's at the end of the show. And I think that's uh, where the problem stands. And I speak in as an American. 
I don't condone a lot of the war crimes we committed in World War II, despite the fact that, yeah, we fought the Nazis, which was pretty neat, but... Yeah, yeah and in Imperial Japan wasn't great, but did they deserve all of their citizens being nuked? No, uh, they did not. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> but this one frames like all the war crimes and atrocities as joyful jaunt numbers. And I just can't. I feel like they didn't quite want to grapple with the horrors that went on from this war on mm -hmm. the Americans think, fault. And I think what we're really all getting at is a is a tone issue. It's just it's not a dark enough show for the subject matter. Yep. Yeah. I think but, they, they tried to create that like the heartbreaking moments when they do hear over the radio what has happened to their home and yeah. stuff. But it just wasn't enough for me because it doesn't I, connect. Exactly. Because it's it nothing builds up to it. It's not like you have like and, and you never get that like crushing moment where like he realizes I was wrong. Like I shouldn't have sided with them because look at what they did. And, and you never get that moment. Like it just doesn't happen. <laughs> And I thought um, we would have that framing device so we would have the hindsight that us people have now. Where it's like, maybe I shouldn't have fucking disowned my sister <laughs> and my yeah. family for this shit. <laughs> you see, but the, he does that. I don't know. He, he doesn't get the remorse until years and years later. So but that's us like... speaking as American, An Andrew. That's us speaking from our own, like, hatred of our own country. I'm very interested in Rachel's opinion as not being an American, being in Singapore and, like, having no, quote unquote, well, American allegiance media, to us. American media has infected every country, so. Yes, it has, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, to me, when I was watching it, I was, I think they were trying to compel me to be on Sammy's side and as like an Asian uh, person um, especially in this day and age when like you said Andrew you know the American media is everywhere I was sort of compelled to be like oh yeah Sammy's the hero like especially in the in the lyrics where they're like we are Americans and stuff like that like it made me feel some type of way because I know that the struggles that like children of immigrants nowadays in America have uh, in being accepted for what they are which is um you know citizens of america so absolutely i i heard that and i was like wow like this must be such a great you know sort of musical for people um that go through that struggle but then now thinking about it or like upon reflection i was like actually like should i really have thought that sammy was the good guy for dropping everything and you know all of his like family's honor quote unquote for a country that was like not really doing very good things and um well yeah and he, and he yeah. can feel in his heart that he is an american but when america puts you into a camp and says you are not an american or at least we do not see you as one we're gonna take away um, the rights we give americans yeah yeah i mean at that point you need to do something and you need to stand up and and what he should have done is he should have been like i'm an american and i need to stand up and say i'm an american and you need to give me my rights, yeah. not oh I'm going to join your military because then maybe you'll maybe you'll uh, turn around and be like oh well you joined the military so I guess you're a citizen now. Yeah, <laughs> and I think in showing all of the different sides because there were like five or six different perspectives on this entire situation. Uh, while that was really great, I think all of the characters are so extreme in what they think. Like Sammy, like dropped his entire family and had no like moments of being like, is what I'm doing actually right? Or is this really something that I should, like the decision that I should be making? And I wish that they had less characters that showed those perspectives, but delved deeper and and sort of developed those characters so that they showed the layers that different people had. Imagine if Sammy had an 11 o'clock number all about like him deciding whether or not to betray his family and like yeah. cut him off. Imagine yeah. how heartbreaking that would be to see song? George Takai. Yeah, he had his I want song of like, I'm gonna, I love America and I'm gonna well, fight. No, no, no. Did he get a song when he left his family? I can't Fuck even no. remember. No, we gotta, we gotta wrap this in, up and get George Takai they did on that stage. In just a dialogue scene. It's like, isn't that like a very big decision that he should sing? And like, and and really, that might have turned me because I'm not. 
like, yes, I'm, I'm giving my own political opinions and things like that, but I'm not saying that there is no show that could exist where someone with his political values could have been on stage and could have been good. Even Miss uh, Saigon had a character like that, that you kind yeah. of supported. Yeah, you just need to actually, you know, put some passion behind their words and have them sing a number about why they believe what they believe, not just have them go up to their sister and say, I can't believe you're siding with that guy. Bye. <laughs> I think the music, while beautiful, it was, you know, because in musical theater, we always say, like, we sing when words aren't enough. And I yeah. thought that the placement of music was a bit strange because they had all of these filler songs that were like, okay, like, I'm sitting here <clears throat> appreciating this, like, this is pretty, but what? And then in the parts where I really felt like I needed a punch of, like, a huge song that really, like, blew me away and brought yeah. me to tears, I was like, "What? where is this? Like, I'm, I'm missing it now? And so that was strange for me, like, the placement of where they chose to insert their songs and where they decided to have them just speak dialogue. Yeah, it's like they never they never had a big song about any of their, like, big decisions. They had songs about, like, oh, we're going to do a dance party, and it's not, it's it's in a camp that's not good, and, like, here we go, here's our song. It's like, what, it just has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Can I be a horrible cynic for one moment? Sure, Jess. For and one I, moment? For, oh, you should be at the whole, the you can be at the whole episode <laughs> if you want, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> the entire podcast? Oh, Ooh. damn. Since damn. episode one, it's never stopped. <laughs> Guys, I grew no. up in the year. I can roast him now. <laughs> I was so polite in the last episode. I was like, oh, yeah, like this, this is. No, I'm like. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you understood the the uh, discussion that goes on in this show. No, you, the, the, you can tell me to, that I'm an idiot and I don't understand what I'm talking the about. The tier of that, discussion on this show is all the way down in, like, garbage tier. Like, we just <laughs> yell at each other. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me be the horrible cynic for a moment. And maybe maybe you'll agree with me even, Rachel. You never know. Or maybe you'll hate me because you think I'm wrong. Because I might be wrong. But I feel like... They just wanted to give as many songs as, to Leia Salonga as they could. And everyone else was kind of a uh, secondary thought because I feel like they had Leia Salonga casted and then they were like, well, we got to give her a bunch of numbers because that's what people are coming into the theater for. And mm -hmm. then so Sammy, fuck him. He don't get a song like he's not Leia Salonga. <laughs> Let's give her the higher song, even though the emotions that she's going through in this scene really do not support that. Well, I, I think she's brilliant in Miss Saigon and I think she's brilliant in everything else she's done and she does great with the material she's given. Her character is not going through nearly enough for these to warrant all these numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I mean, I I think Kay as a character went through a lot of push and pull with trying to figure out whether she should be loyal to her dad and to her brother because she raised her brother and then her dad raised her so she had a lot of confusion in like where where should I really be following or who should I be following and then like her love interest gets brought in and he has another perspective on mm -hmm. it and I'm like oh my <laughs> goodness give this girl a break but at the same time a lot of the songs that she sung other than uh what is it called higher higher yeah. I love that song but which was beautiful I'm gonna yes. put that in my audition rep but at the same time I was like the other stuff that she sang just wasn't as memorable. I feel like in other musicals that she's been in, I walk out and I'm like, oh, wow, like, Leia Salonga, like, sang all of this stuff. And I just recently saw her in Sweeney Todd in Singapore, actually. I bet as that was amazing. It. it was, she was amazing. Yeah, it was great. But um, I feel like in this one, a lot of the songs were kind of felt like filler songs, even though it wasn't a sung through musical. Like, it felt like a lot of the songs fit in to a sung through musical but they it wasn't completely all music so at this i was like you know this is a bit strange it's like a, a sung through musical where they cut all the story numbers yes <laughs> <laughs> um and i don't mean to be negative because i love leia salonga and everything that she's in i am always a such a big fan um <laughs> But really, I feel like they formed the show around her when they should have formed it around Sammy, um, mm -hmm. because he is the one that I personally believe had a lot to go through and makes the big choice in the end. Whereas Leia yeah. Salonga, 
I feel like she would stand out more if we had less of her, if that makes sense. Yeah. Wait, I'm trying to remember what his name is. I saw him Who? as Aladdin. As the Kelly kid, Leung? Uh, the, yeah, Telly Leung. Um, I thought he was really amazing with what he was given. Um, yes. I really liked his, his characterization. I just wish that they gave him more layers to play with because I feel like if they gave that to him, he would have taken it and like ran and just had such a standout performance. But um, instead, you know, he he got that. It, it was kind of like a one note. And I wish that they gave him more things to grapple with and to play with. In the you movie. see, I feel like he had a lot to deal with. Um, Like what makes a man is possibly the most emotionally gripping song in the entire show. Yeah, Um, it is. Um, What's his face? Kay's boyfriend that I feel like has nothing. <laughs> he is mm -hmm. a reflection of an ideal and nothing else. Mm hmm. He could have been the most interesting character, too, or one mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. I I literally, I would watch this with my girlfriend, and I turned to her, and I was like, this is literally the communist character from Fiddler on the Roof. Like, he, there's nothing aside for, to, to him aside from his ideals, which mm -hmm. makes him uninteresting. And then his, like, whole love story with Kay is really, like, out of nowhere. I thought they had, like, two moments, and then they were like, I'm willing to die for this person. I was like, at least give them. I did they even get a love song. I know that Sammy and Hannah did, but I they don't share think that... it with. They share it together between the two of them. Um, I think it's with you, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, yeah. It's so um, memorable. <laughs> but I feel like if at the end, like you're willing to say goodbye to your brother uh, that you've raised and. Yeah, just do all of these like extraordinary things for somebody you should probably get a little bit more development in your love arc story so yeah i was a bit like i i wish there was more there because i think it would have added a lot and and yeah made a big impact on how i see the characters and how i have shaped them in my head but not if, enough of what we think. Um, it's time to look at what the Broadway reviewers think. It's time for our favorite section that is now added to our podcast. Previews, where Bree talks about the reviews of our Broadway critics and gets to be the bearer of bad news. So, Bree, what did the New York critics say about Allegiance? Yes, I'm here to tell you. OK, so in the New York Times, Charles Isherwood, Isherwood, Isherwood. Isherwood praised the performers, but wrote, while well-intentioned and polished, Allegiance struggles to balance both ambitions and doesn't always find an equilibrium. Variety felt that, despite good performances and designs, the well-intentioned story would have been better suited as a play and that in their sincere efforts to humanize their complex historical ma material, the creators have oversimplified and reduced to... <laughs> Generic themes. In a similar way, The Hollywood Reporter felt that, as a musical, Michael Dale of BroadwayWorld.com admired the cast, but thought that Allegiance, while certainly not a bad theater piece, is an underachieving one. Jeez, these are just scathing. The large number of songs... <laughs> what? All these are scathing. But remember, this was the year of Hamilton and Waitress. This show, as much as it had high hopes, had no chance. Fair. So as mentioned, the large number of songs was seen as a problem by the Huffington Post, which noted, though Co has written a lot of it, the score just doesn't make the grade. Mark Kennedy of the Associated Press complained of jarring writing, commenting, there are long periods of unrelenting misery with families ripped from their homes and subjected to uh, brutality by vindicted, vindictive white soldiers. Then there's a song about the joys of baseball. <laughs> Yeah, that that makes a fair <laughs> point. That gives way to scenes with dangerous choking dust storms, a dead baby, and jail beatings. Then there is a happy sock hop. Sounds chaotic. I wish I would have watched it, guys. Uh, yeah, um, they're not wrong, though. <laughs> critical of both the score and the script, Jesse Green of Vulture thought that outside of several moments, too much of the show is devoted to far-fetched plot twist whose attempts to gin up excitement only look silly in the shadow of the larger forces at work. 
Terry Teachout of the Wall Street Journal criticized Coe's score and deemed the show of no artistic value whatsoever. Save as an... Save as an object lesson in how to write a really bad Broadway musical. Now, I don't agree with most of those. <laughs> that was really harsh. I don't you know think what? I agree with and that. You had me read that. That hurt my soul because as like somebody who does the theater making now, um, ouch. I would cry a lot. That la- that last one was is way too harsh. Holy crap. That's no artistic value for you, though. whatsoever other than as... <laughs> How to write a really bad Broadway musical? I, I like, think this it isn't, was this like, isn't no. Jekyll and Hyde. Like, come on. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it deserved that that bad of a review at all. Yeah, I feel like most of the other ones were relatively fair and said things I kind of agreed with. Um, maybe not as aggressively as I would have said it. Well, you're just such a nice guy, Jess. I'm not. You're I'm not a, at I'm all a horrible human being. Bree will tell you. <laughs> Jesse, you're one of the nicest people I've ever met. Wow, that's so unfair Aww. to say. He is. He really is. <laughs> you're very mean on this show, but you're very nice to me. Because so. I love you. And I, I'm not mean to anyone on this show. I love Rachel. I love Andrew. Everyone here just gets so He's much love from me. Musicals. I remember I sent a very nice message to Rachel once, and she's like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <sighs> um, how do we feel about those reviews yikes i think the um the second one the variety one uh about the oversimplification and reducing to generic themes uh i do very strongly agree with that one um because that is kind of what they did. They they made a very complex and kind of horrific subject into a very simple story. Um, I can see why they did that, because they're trying to give it more broad appeal uh, to a, a larger audience, but I think they lost a lot of what made the material interesting in the first place. Yeah. I I agree with that as well. I can also see where their struggle in trying to find the balance between simple and like way too confusing because yeah, I mean, what it was based on was such a huge topic that had so many moving parts. Um, So I think their struggle was really to find that balance and they just went one way and not the other. And our reviews probably would have been the same if they had gone the other way, which is like, really try and like tackle everything and it's strange because like we say that they have oversimplified but the feeling that you get from that oversimplification was like but there's too many things happening anyway like it it kind of had the reverse effect because i was like oh this is like you know everything's really spelled out but i I, i'm still confused i think i think what they did is they simplified everything and kept everything when they should have simplified two or three particular parts of it and really amplified those. So simplified, but not so much so that there's no substance. Mm -hmm. Whereas what they did here is they took everything and then simplified all of it. And then now you just have a mess. (laughs) I think that the characters would have touched everybody a bit more if they did have all of the development that they deserved. And like you said, Andrew, um, they cut out a few of the viewpoints and then kind of added them as layers into all of the characters mm-hmm. sort of I- intertwining because human beings are very confusing and have a lot going on in their heads. And if they captured that a little bit more and didn't do sort of the like one note, like this is how they think um, reflection of a person, I would have felt much more deeply for every single character and really been very affected by their stories but because that didn't really happen i was like oh well they're not people you know yeah um and and i uh, go ahead really i just kind of want to talk about the japanese american man that works for the government um mike masaoka yes i want (laughs) to talk about him and whether or not we find his entire subplot necessary because while we're in the internment camp and we spend a lot of time with these folks, we we do cut away very often to him. 
Like, mm-hmm. well, I tried, and I'm doing my best for the Japanese on uh, on American ground, but uh, I don't know. I'm willing to let my brother yeah. die for it all. I don't think that, that he really needed to be there. It just added another layer that just didn't really give us anything. Mm-hmm. And it just made the show more difficult to follow. I think in, you know... Uh, including him in all of it, they tried to show how difficult it was, like how in the beginning he was trying to appeal for his people and then he was told to say all of this stuff by the Americans. And they tried to show how complex, you know, it was and how he he tried to balance the needs of his people and them fitting in or, or being accepted by American culture. So having to do all of these like horrible things like sacrifice their lives. But... Yeah, it was really confusing. It was an interesting sort of view. And and I thought that I got a bit of insight into like, oh, yeah, like this situation must have been horrible and, and just not a fun one. But at the same time, I was like, I feel overwhelmed by all of the different viewpoints. So, yeah, well. I think it's time for a mid show. Very briefly, I feel like there's one red flag we need to talk about before the mid show. <clears throat> oh boy. There Here is an go. elephant is in the room. And it, his name is I George Takei. I don't Takei. know what he's referring to. Oh <laughs> my. Oh my. I think he does very good in the show, but this is quote unquote his story as the way that they like to market it. And let's not like, forget yeah. that what is it? He is very pro America in everything he does. Like he was even in a propaganda film as a ch- very young man. Like right out of the internment camp, he starred in a film called The Green Berets, which I was taught in like my American history class, where he played <laughs> like a Vietnamese man. And yeah, he's a main character in it. It's a John Wayne movie directed by John Wayne. About like the horrors of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So he's very much on the American side, even ever since that. Um, And he's a very good actor. And he's also, um, as Brie would told me, was in a propaganda film called They Called Us the Enemy, which is uh, very much pro-America. So that is where I kind of feel like a lot of this films or not film. This show's leanings lean with the beliefs of George Takei. So basically it is very pro America because the person who made it is very pro. I don't even know if he made it. He was just very involved and then well, his, starred and like all of that. It's his story and he stars. I mean, he <clears throat> definitely has some involvement, some large amount of involvement. What are your thoughts, Rachel? I, I, kind of wish i think that the show did a very good job in highlighting the courage that the japanese americans had and their resilience which was a huge i mean there's a whole song about it oh yeah um and and it highlighted for me you know how much strength they had to have as you know people to get through all of that but yeah i just i really wish that it had more punch in talking about how terrible everything was and what they were put through because without that we couldn't see the full picture of of you know how incredible they were for getting through it yeah all right let's go into a mid-show announcement very briefly hey folks today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donation by our donors at patreon on Patreon, you're getting to see Rachel and Bree and Andrew's beautiful faces and my average face. So you get <laughs> to see all of us in our full glory, whether it be for positive wow. or for negative. Even in modesty, he can't be humble. <laughs> he tried. Um, I tried so hard. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> But and also you are getting a full length commentary on the Phantom of the Opera 1989 starring Robert England with from me and Andrew, a weekly podcast where me and Andrew cover TV shows. And currently we're doing Fosse Verdon, which if you're missing out on that, you're you're missing out on a lot. Rachel's face says it all. Yes. 
Approve. Zoom in on that. <laughs> Approved. Um, but Andrew, why don't you tell us who's supporting us on Patreon? Oh boy, here we go. <gasps> Our current patrons are Terry Nilman, Max Lunig, Benjamin Lear, Lily Ackles, John Dunn, Terran the Duck, Jess the Stampede, Ewan Cassidy, Haley McDonald, Taskier, Fire of September, Mina Maniri, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Haley Murray, Alice in Wonderland, B Way Flicks, Nathaniel Stacey Coon, Luna Rocks 222, Eric Ale, Drew A. Wider, Carrie Ahern, Christine Malmadel, Mezzanine Theater Diary, Marilou Shukwit. <laughs> And Natalie Cole Birchfield, John Vanals, Holy Stickality, Russ Walker, Musical Hell, Emily Grace, Allison, no, 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 Andrew Van Barson, Emily Stacks, Kyle Summers, Jessica A, Mr. B, Janae C, Kyle, Christina Francis, Skyler, uh, Liz Lim, Corey Wilmarth, Allison Stoller, every, nothing is certain except Beth and Taxes, I'm losing it. Uh, it's getting too late, Cullen, it's past Andrew's Thespian. bedtime. Oh, <laughs> Elizabeth Levengood, Victoria Tribble, Alex, Joseph Evans Green, Wait in the Wings, and Jamie Holland. My god, there's so many names. <laughs> <laughs> they give us a little extra financial support that helps us to keep the lights on here, musicals with cheese, and pay Brie, because Brie deserves money. Uh, I mean, if she has to deal with Unlike us every us. week, she deserves to get paid for it. And I will keep you updated on my job status. I do still, I still don't have a job. But I <laughs> talk I to your bo future boss, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but please, please join them in supporting us and get tons of fun perks, such as Patreon-like commentaries, a full Patreon podcast. Once a month, you get to hang out with me, Andrew, and Bree, and maybe we'll talk Rachel into hanging out with us um, for next month. Uh, yes. <laughs> And we'll be playing Jackbox games. We'll be playing user words and you can play with us. You can try to make us laugh. It'll be tons of fun. And if you're not you on our Patreon, you are missing out. Also, leave us a review on iTunes. Like we're, we're, we're trying, trying to get up there and I feel like we, we could do better. We're so good at advertising. It's ridiculous. We should be marketeers. Back to the show. What do you think of the opening number, Wishes on the Wind? Then maybe wishes do come true. Wishes on the wind, drifting through the night, connecting friends and family as they float away from sight. Wishes on the wind are wishes that we share, not only for ourselves, but for the ones we love will always be there for my sister I i'm gonna let the guests take it rachel get on that it's all you rachel <laughs> all you rachel i thought that wishes on the wind was beautiful i think it set the tone for the entire musical but it just it wasn't as big and punchy and interesting as i think a lot of other musicals try to make their it first means number nothing. Yeah, it, there's, they, I mean, I thought if you really look, the part in the end where like climaxes and all of the beautiful harmonies happen was stunning. But if you are somebody that isn't really into musicals and you watch it, you might not be that um, invested in the Impressed. musical. Damn. <laughs> I, I honestly just feel like the lyrics are kind of generic in a way that I'm like, what is what does this mean? Like I I was very involved in like George Takei's opening scene where um he's like uh, they're just making sure I'm still alive and I'm like I want to see this character I want I want to dive into this guy this disillusioned former World War II vet and then we go back to the past and I'm like and they're like wishes on the wind and I'm like yeah it's a Japanese pro proverb and I'm like okay that's pretty but it sounds gorgeous I just wish it had more meaning in the overall story because mm -hmm. I, I think. Uh, I, unlike Andrew, are very lyrically connected and this lyrics are very poetic, but doesn't mean much. Yeah, I think they tried yeah. to uh, give the audience an insight onto each of the characters like I want, which is actually the entire like concept of the song. It's about like what they wish for the most. And that was I don't know what's the word it was useful as an audience member to be like okay so she's this one he's this one um but at the same time because it was such a like you said generic lyrics I had already made 
an inference like on the characters before I fully got to know them and I wish that they explored it more individually than like chucking it all into one song and being like here run with this like this is what they all wish for if they could um yeah and then like the law school thing with Sammy and stuff I was like this is interesting <laughs> what do you mean by this is interesting please elaborate because I mean I think it's a very true it's a very true narrative. I think a lot of Asian Americans and I mean, Asians of all cultures, especially kids of immigrants feel and can relate to that. Um, the law school, you know, like you should go to law school. No, but I don't want to go to law school. I mean, every reading that I've ever done has centered around that exactly. And so while I was like, wow, I really like can see why people would relate to that. I was like, oh, so they brought that like that trope into this like it's it's such a overused thing and I think that it was unnecessary for the the musical other than to set up how um how much how many expectations were placed on Sammy by his parents other than that I was like well what was the use of dropping law school like just to make this more Asian like I don't know it was weird <laughs> that that was the thing I thought either. but I was worried and I was being like maybe you're just generalizing from the media you've consumed and all that Mm -hmm. I think it is relatable. A lot of people will relate to that and see themselves in that story. But I was like, I wish that they had just gone another route or, or did something different than that very like generalized like law school. You need to go to law school. You don't want to go to law school? Try anyway. Like, you know, it was it was it was very um, I was like, oh, sitting back like this is it. Here we go again. Law school all over again. <laughs> Have you tried going to law school yet? I mean, come on. It's got to be pretty fun. Um, I am the youngest of <laughs> six children, and I luckily am not the one that... I, I mean, I have a career in the arts. My parents got to me, and they were like, you know what? We'll just let this girl do whatever she wants, because, like, <laughs> she just... It's whatever. <laughs> I mean... I don't have a career at all, so, you know, you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the brief period we heard her sing, like on our Miss Saigon episode, I was like, oh, yeah, this girl's got a career. Thank you. <laughs> and also, she's like Jess BFF with never Ava Nobuzada. So that's 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 pretty cool, too. She's doing big things now. You guys did so a Miss Saigon episode. Yeah. Uh, I'm on the show. That's my big thing. Oh, God damn. That's Oof, really sad. That's insulting. <laughs> I'm trying to say we're not a big thing. No, I'm saying town, Andrew. That this is my this is my big thing. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> she she I, looked to the ground and like and just for that sad. we're not even gonna pay. No. You. <laughs> <laughs> no Let's I'm, talk about Gaman. There's a word we will say to help get through each day. We will bear any nightmare. This song is so gorgeous, and I find myself humming it a lot on my bike rides, even when I'm just kind of like sitting in silence. I'm like, come on. Yeah, I, I, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> now I'm just picturing Jess singing this. <laughs> Which is a very, very depressing sight, if I do say so myself, as someone that yes. lives with me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> What was this song about again? Rachel. <laughs> um, gaman means to like carry on, move on. It's like a, it's basically a, a Japanese proverb for like resilience. So the whole song was kind of talking about how they have to do that. And then like after that, do not fight the storm comes, right? So yeah. Do not say to fight the storm comes right before gaman. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's basically about how they have to just carry on. And Sammy is like the opposing force that is like no like we take action here and um 
Yeah. I thought, I think Gaon's beautiful. And I really like that they did incorporate the Japanese culture and their, um, you know, their their music and musical styles into it and their language. I thought it was a really nice incorporation of that. And I, I love that, those little like moments in the musical when we got to see their culture. Yeah. Great analysis, Andrew. <laughs> nice. It was a good one. <laughs> What else do you want me to say? <laughs> Honestly, my thought on a lot of the music is that it, it the music feels very polished, which I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. It feels it's like, like they were it. set up to be pieces of Leia Salonga's album, as terrible as that sounds. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like the music could use a bit more edge in some of the places. What? You don't like the next song we're talking about? Get in the game? All about baseball? Yeah, what is that? Get in the game. This is... What is this, high school I hate this now? song so much. <laughs> I hate this song so much I want to die. Gotta get in, gotta get in, gotta get in. For baseball here, block 13 up at bat. Gotta get it. The base is fully loaded, and two outs is where we're at. Gotta get it. 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 I, I honestly, I can't remember why this song came <laughs> up. Like, did they just have a scene where they were just talking about baseball and then? Um, I think. Get in the game was when they were like, what should we do as the thing to bring us all together? And they were all like talking about super Japanese things. And Sammy's like, okay, what about baseball? And they're all like, yeah, that sounds great. And then they sing a song about baseball, which is exact. I think their reaction get to your, Sammy. Get your head in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, their reactions to Sammy saying that was my exact reaction to like, but why? <laughs> What? <laughs> like, like when when Sammy's like, "What about baseball?" and they're all like, "Okay," when when they were singing um the baseball song, I was like, "But I'm confused now. Where? What is this?" Maybe maybe they should have sung they should have sung a song called "What the fuck are you talking about, Sammy?" <laughs> <laughs> Whose side are you on? <laughs> uh, well, he's on the American side. He joins the army. He joins a unit that is specifically a suicide unit because the Americans are racist. This show is the show <laughs> both highlights that and ignores that at the same time. And also, actually, I mean, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but we never talked about how at the end he gets that um, affirmation and like recognition from his dad who was the opposing force like who was the one that was like i will stay true to my honor and like do whatever i can to stand up for what i believe in and then at the end he gets the approval so it kind of does reiterate that what sammy did was like the right thing and now we're talking about how it kind of wasn't well yeah yeah, yeah. it wasn't though like as an american he did the wrong thing mm -hmm. he literally died for a purpose that made no sense in my opinion as a dirty, dirty American. Well, but he did, because he did die. Well, he didn't die for it, but he no. he fought against, you know, everything that happened. He's injured for it. Yeah, and um, he got his dad released, and a whole bunch of people went on their merry way with a bus ticket after what he did. So he he. But he was helped. that the reason why he did it, or was it because he loved America? Mm. Well, I think... It was that, it was the first one. Right. Yeah, because he, he does talk about, he talks a lot about how, well, if I just join the army, then they will release dad. Like when, when his dad does gets taken away, he's like, I will join the army to do this. And I can see why, you know, obviously he does love America. He wants to, um, you know, be full force, like very loyal to them. But he did do it to sort of like talk about his family and all the people in the concentration camps. Like they they showed that a little bit in the sequence when he's talking to yeah. Mike. It just feels very a little tasteless, and I think it also shows how bland the music is that we're still talking about the story. <laughs> 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 Whoop! There it is. 
<laughs> Let's talk about Hire, a song that I actually <laughs> like. As a song. I love it. There once was a little girl playing on a swing set. One her grandpa built by the sycamore tree near the rusty farmyard gate. And while her mama pinned the laundry, the little girl would cry out loud. Push me higher, push me higher, push me, I can't wait. Her mama would push a couple times, but there was laundry still to do. So she learned to use her own strength, pull her own weight, push on through to swing higher, higher than before, higher, but scared to reach for something more, higher, higher Well, go ahead, Jess, what do you got? This song is cute. <laughs> It is an extended <laughs> metaphor about High swinging parades. on a swing. <laughs> and Lea Salonga. Okay, let, let me phrase my experience of this show, this song, before I talk about that. Um, I saw it as a clip before the show was released, and I was like, oh, this is beautiful. I'm so excited for this show, and I hope that it, everything lives up to the height of this song, and it doesn't. <laughs> um <laughs> As sad as that is, and I'm <laughs> sad to say that, um, but they should have called this highest because it's the highest point in the show. <laughs> it kind of is. Um, it is. It feels like an eleven o'clock number, despite being like at the end of the first act. I kind of want this to be like the final scene that we have with Kay. Like, if we had just pushed this until like two thirds through the act two, I think I would have like been sobbing by the end of it. But right now when she's just like, I'm going to decide to resist with my boyfriend and maybe have a child with him. <laughs> I'm like, doesn't hit quite as hard. Mm -hmm. But what do you think, Rachel? I love the song. I think it's beautiful. It's one of the only ones. Oh, that sounds really bad. But I mean, like, it's the the Ooh. one that I I remember the most and i think brought me to the emotional place that it needed to the most like it did its job the best and like you said i think placement and everything could have been played around with but it was a beautiful song and it it has a lot of interesting intervals in it that aren't typically used so like the the melody and everything had a very unique flavor to it that i think in, in Broadway musicals of like contemporary times and stuff, a lot of people are using very like basic sort of things, but other people are trying to play with those. And so I think that Hired did that for me. I was like, wow, this is so unusual. And I will probably, if I tried to learn this, I would have to like figure it out a little bit more. But listening to it was like, this is, it fills me with like joy that they did this. Yeah. Not going to lie, um, the only musical theater song that I can really compare this to, and Rachel will probably be the only one that gets this, is Meadowlark from The Baker's Wife. Mm -hmm. It feels very similar to that in its progression and just the way it is placed in the story. It really wants to be Meadowlark, but really it's Last Midnight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think I would have, I like this song, I would have loved it if it were in Act 2. <laughs> mm-hmm. That I think that yeah. I think they did really well with um those solo songs, uh What Makes a Man and Higher. They captured like emotions very well and the melody was stunning and I really remembered it. But I wish that their ensemble, while they tried to use them a lot and, and give them lots of things to do, I wish that their ensemble songs highlighted the strengths of their their uh cast. Because, like, as an Asian actress, I, I really was looking forward to this musical um, being amazing and hitting really hard and showing off the skills that Asian uh, actors have. But I feel like the ensemble singing-wise and music-wise was underused. I agree. Yeah. Um, but don't yeah. worry. We have a bunch of dances like Paradise where they get to dance all around and be goofy. I hate that song, by the oh, way. That's is that the uh is that the one where they do like a like a barn dance or something? Yeah, like, yeah that that is. <laughs> it's so pointless. It's it it's it was so pointless that I still remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel means I made memorable. a note made a note in my head like, man, why does this why is this here? 
Is that the that's <laughs> but that's the one that exists because they're trying to show the boyfriend's like point of view. Opposing view. Yeah. Right? It was that Yes. I think so. Yeah. So it started off like interesting. I was like, oh, let's listen to what this guy has to say. And then they were like But then they just started dancing. Let's yeah. dance. <laughs> Whoopee! <laughs> Politics are lame. Let's dance. <laughs> All right. I think like Act Two is mostly reprises, reprises. Does anyone have anything they want to say about the songs in Act Two? Well, who could forget such classics as Victory Swing <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Rachel? No, I, I don't. Well. I think actually we should talk about Sammy and Hannah because they sing like <sighs> I ought to go. I, I, yeah. What? How do you feel about that, Jesse? With you, I'd be better. But what can I do? That song feels like it belongs in a different musical. I ought to go. Feels like such a weird, goofy, like they said the Japanese would be compliant, but they ain't. And here's some nice harmonies. It's pretty. It is a pretty jaunty like, oh, this is cute. But also Hannah gets murdered in the opening of Act Two. So she has no point in the story aside from a catalyst to make like Sammy cut off his entire family. A white woman yeah. like literally like she's like, oh, but there's one good one who did all the right thing. So mm hmm. It feels I don't know. like what aboutism. What about this one girl who was nice to a one Japanese boy? I also yeah. think it was really interesting that they decided to give. Oh, I love Katie Rose Clark, by the way. She was she's in great. Saigon. Yeah. Wow. So many like ties. But um, yeah, Katie Rose Clark is amazing, and she did a lot with what she was given. But they do give her the song in Act Two, which is "Should I," and then she dies right after. Yep. She's like, I have chosen to do the right thing, and then she dies. So it was it was weird. I was like, if you're gonna invest like a couple songs into a character, at least give her something. She, like a payoff. she reminds me of the baker's wife, but less developed. Yeah. She exists to die, but also like let's let's not give her any moments to like really have an opinion on things. Mm -hmm. And yet you're wearing her hat. We are all Nurse Hannah. Me, Brie, and Andrew are all Nurse Hannah. We're all the good ones. <laughs> Very controversial. <laughs> None of us are the good ones. All of us should have probably been cut from the show. <laughs> but we are the only white ones that aren't problematic. Well, say what you will. I'm sure someone has something that we've said. <laughs> I, I There is no other hats I could have bought. What could I have bought? A fucking, like, like military hat? No, that would have been stolen valor. People have called us out. What? George Takai never wore a hat? We could have gotten, like, a beret. <laughs> that would have been offensive and stolen valor, Andrew. God. I love stealing valor, though. Why can't I just do that? <laughs> so what is our overall thoughts on allegiance and our cheese rating andrew i'll start with you oh boy um uh i don't know very mediocre like in a bad way oh my god i don't like i i don't like the message i really don't i i think that the subject matter could be done really well but the way they swing it is just it's so like pro-america and just like and i'm okay with having some of that 
if you have a counterpoint to it, but they really don't give the counterpoint any any stage time. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan. I think the acting is all is all great though, and everybody performs very well. Uh, even George Takai, who I was surprised to see doesn't do a bad job he actually is it's one just, of the highlights like him at the beginning and him at the end are like so great mm-hmm. yeah and him at the end i i did i did enjoy um it's just the the messaging behind it it's a little bit iffy in my opinion um as far as cheese i'm trying to diversify uh thank you cheese.com for this one i'm giving it a a kiri which is apparently the only cheese made in japan uh, so there you go. <laughs> All right, Bree, you're up next. I didn't watch the film musical. Why does she um, get an opinion here? Because she can read. <laughs> yeah, she can what read what our discussion. Well, if I'm gonna rate your discussion, I'll give you a um, nice zero out of ten. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys did great. Um, Stay on topic for most of the time. <laughs> we didn't suddenly uh, go into the a important tangent. things are down. Um, can I give you guys like a fluffy Japanese cheesecake? Mm. What's Japanese discussion? about it? <laughs> it's made in. <laughs> Don't they yeah, make those? The like jig- fluffy jiggly cheesecake? ones that are stamped. Jiggly, yeah, they're like Japanese cheesecakes, right? Sure. Okay. Not wrong here. Andrew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you fucking dick. <laughs> 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 All, right, All right, Rachel, you're up. I think that it was beautiful. Um, I could appreciate it. And I think it had a lot of potential. But after everything we've discussed, yeah, I, I feel like it was lacking in some areas and also tried to oversimplify in others. Um, but I would give it, I don't know if you guys have had these, but they're these like Japanese cheese crackers that are amazing. But if you eat like too many of them, your throat gets dry and very like, meow, meow, you know, sound effects. So yeah, I would oh. give it that because I think that, um, it was a bit a bland in in certain areas, but had a lot of like potential to be great. It had a lot of heart. Exactly. <laughs> um, I think that's a good, 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 good response. Rachel, you are always a joy to have on the show and you always bring your A game here. Um, maybe it's because it's always early in the morning and you're we're getting the best version of you when we get you on. But... <laughs> This show, I think, is confused, in my opinion, um, and I want to like it. I really, really did. Um, I think the pro shot is badly filmed, unlike the Miss Saigon pro shot, which I think is very well filmed and probably one of my favorite pro shots ever. Um, I think the show in and of itself is not sure what it wants to say, but what it does say, I think, is very effective. I think Leia Salonga her songs are gorgeous and anytime she's on stage i am intrigued because she is such a compelling actress in and of herself um george takei same i could say for him but really by the end of the show i felt hollow i felt uh, unemotionally connected and i feel that's sad and i hope i am not offending anyone by saying that it was a packed year so maybe maybe if they had a little time and they were up against hamilton and waitress they they might have put another step forward to try to get a toady nomination let alone a win um so my cheese rating is serbian donkey cheese as posted and promoted by george takei himself (laughs) on his twitter on november 15th 2019 are you serious yes Yes, this is a thing can we pull this up can we share this share this (laughs) <laughs> um it is in a video that he um posted co- where he just says what is your favorite cheese friends and it's one of the cheeses in that video so i was like you know what that that feels about right i feel like i could use that oh fair enough george takei's personal favorite cheese i, I won't say that but it was definitely of. featured in the video that he posted 
I won't speak to Mr. Decay himself. Do y'all see it for the moment it was on screen? Yes. I did. I also All saw right. makes cheese out of his wife's breast milk. Hey, hey, yeah. George Takai. George Takai, what are you what are you eating over there? I don't know are what you he buying... does with his wife. Um George, what's up, man? Are you eating someone else's wife's breast milk cheese? <laughs> oh Is yeah, George he's, not... he's gay. I forgot yeah, about that. married to a man? <laughs> Is your husband giving breast milk? George Takei, explain! That's some hairy cheese. <laughs> Do you know who doesn't make hairy cheese? Our wonderful patrons. Thank you guys for listening. Rachel, why don't you tell us where we can find you and all the wonderful stuff you're doing in the world? You can find me at HyperRachel on Instagram. And I now have a podcast. Surprise, I didn't know that that was going to happen. But yes, it's in between the podcast. Like, find us wherever you find podcasts and i've listened yeah. to it and it is a joy to listen to rachel is you a have? great host of course oh, i no. have I've, i shared it on our face our, our twitter and all that you did i was like this is so sweet and the nicest thing that anybody has ever done for me so and then you come you. on here and you attack me <laughs> well i'm sorry okay please invite me back <laughs> <laughs> please listen to our podcast it honestly is a joy to listen to is there anything else you want to promote out there for the world I don't know <laughs> how about you sing us two bars of higher right now just for the world to hear At absolutely not in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> see I was a pushover in the last episode and I would have done this kind of thing but um, it is it is, I've had we a have lot to of pay dairy today in the coffee and it's just not I, I know my worth now. It's not my too favorite. many of those cheese crackers. You're gonna have What like if a... I ask for like the first two lines of American <laughs> Dream? And not even American Dream. That's yeah, like, like literally that's spoken lines. So I was like, My father my was a was tattoo a... <laughs> there we are artist in high fall. <laughs> um All right, can you sing can you sing uh, All Star? <laughs> By Please do. <laughs> <laughs> We've come a long way. Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in oh. the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop 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 coming and they don't So thank you guys for listening. We can be found on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher at Musicals with Cheese. Our Twitter is at Cheesy Musicals. Our Patreon is Musicals with Cheese. Our Instagram is Musicals with Cheese. Our YouTube page is Musicals with Cheese. We have a Patreon only podcast called Patreon with Cheese where Andrew and I are currently talking about Fosse Verdon, and it's pretty great because Andrew's learning a lot about Bob Fosse. Who I have just now realized I am almost identical to. Yes, you have sex with a lot of women and also do a lot Tons. of drugs. Very many. And you're also very bald and probably... Extremely. Like, going through marriages, like, there's nothing. Um, exactly. I'm exactly the same <laughs> as Bob Fosse. You also have a goatee. Which is the one thing that's actually similar. Yes. You've also inspired Michael Jackson in many ways, but not that Michael Jackson, another one. Oh, a different Michael Jackson. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Michael Jackson, that's like sells crack down below you. To me. To you, specifically to you. You you taught him. All right, what, 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 what are we talking about? <laughs> Our email is musicaltheaterlives at gmail.com. Our title card was created by the amazing Jolene Casco. Go follow her at Jolene Casco. This show is produced by the absolutely incredible Brianna Jones. And it's her birthday, so it's, just keep on clapping. Yeah, Brie. We love you, Brie. You're amazing. <laughs> Rachel, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? Thank you so much for having me on the show and for yeah, listening to my weird thoughts this week. Oh, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> this is divulged into a horrible mess that will only make sense to people that paid for us on Patreon. <laughs> All right, on that note, we'll see you next time on Musicals with Cheese. Cheese.